Differentiating is straightforward if we expand this equation first. We get 4x squared plus 4x plus 1, and then the derivative is easy to find as 8x plus 4. But what if it was this instead, quantity 2x plus 1 to the power of 100? Suddenly, expanding is impossible. We need a rule for functions nested inside of other functions, and that's the chain rule. By the end of this video, you'll have a complete toolkit to master it, not just how it works, but why, and how to apply it flawlessly every time you take a derivative. Our first question is, what does it even mean to have a nested function? Well, if we have a function like this one, and we think about f as the outside function, and g as the inside function, and we'll look at a bunch of examples where we identify these outside and inside functions, then chain rule just looks like this. The derivative is the derivative of the outside function while the inside function stays the same, and then multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. Why multiplication? Well, the general idea is that we have a pipeline of rates where tiny changes in rate flow from one function to the next. Practically speaking, that means that if we have something like y equal x squared plus 1 quantity cubed, we recognize that the outside function is the cubed part. We can think about that as something cubed. And then the inside function is the x squared plus 1. Remember, our derivative rule is derivative of the outside, keep the inside, then multiply by the derivative of the inside. So when we take the derivative of this outside function, we ignore or we look past what's inside. This is just a power function, something raised to the third power. And we know by power rule that to differentiate this, we bring the 3 down in front and subtract 1 from the exponent to get 3 minus 1 equal to 2. So we differentiate the outside, leaving the inside alone without touching it. But then we multiply by the derivative of that inside function. The derivative of x squared plus 1 is just 2x, so we multiply by 2x. And then all that's left to do is simplify. This outside inside pattern is universal. So let's look at it with some other types of functions. Here we have the square root of one minus cosine of two X. Well, if we rewrite the square root as the one half power, now our function looks just like the previous one. So whenever you have a root, if you write it as a fractional exponent, then this looks just like the power functions that we already know how to deal with. The inside function is the 1 minus cosine of 2x, and the outside function is just something raised to the 1 half power, which means that derivative is going to be bringing that 1 half down in front and subtracting 1 from the exponent. 1 half minus 1 gives us a negative 1 half. So we differentiate the outside function, leaving the inside function completely untouched. But then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So now let's narrow in to this inside function. We're looking at one minus cosine of two X. The derivative of one is zero, so that goes away. The derivative of negative cosine of two X, we now have to think about using another application of chain rule because cosine is the outside function, two X is the inside function. So what's the derivative of negative cosine? Well, that's positive sine. So the derivative of that is gonna be positive sine, that's the derivative of the outside, leaving the inside, completely untouched, but then we have to multiply by the derivative of that inside function. The derivative of 2x is 2, so we multiply by 2, and then all that's left to do is simplify. We can cancel this 2 in the denominator with this 2 in the numerator, bring the sine of 2x to the front to get sine of 2x here in the numerator, and then this negative exponent moves the 1 minus cosine of 2x to the denominator to become a positive 1 half exponent, and we can rewrite that positive 1 half exponent as the square root. So same concept as before, but two applications of chain rule this time. What if we have an exponential function, and more specifically, an exponential function combined with a trigonometric function? Well, our outside function is the exponential, and the inside function is sine of x. The derivative of any exponential is just the exponential itself. So the derivative of e to the anything is exactly the same thing, e to the anything. So we take the derivative of the outside function and we get e, and then we leave the inside function completely untouched, so there's that sine of x left untouched, but then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Sine of x is the inside function, its derivative is cosine of x, so we multiply by cosine x. And no matter what kind of function we pick, we're still gonna continue following this inside-outside pattern. So if we have a logarithmic function, we know the derivative of the natural log of anything is one over that anything, so our derivative is going to be 1 over, that is the derivative of the outside function. We leave that inside function 
untouched in that derivative, and then we multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And the derivative of 5x cubed is 15x squared. The derivative of 1 is 0. So we would get 15x squared plus 0, or just 15x squared. Let's do one more example, this time with a higher order trig function, because they can get a little confusing. When we have something like this, a trig function, raised to some higher order exponent, something greater than 1, we'll sometimes see it written this way, where the exponent is attached to that trigonometric function. What we have to remember is that this is exactly the same as pulling the exponent out to the end here, wrapping the whole thing, the trig function and its argument, in another set of parentheses and raising that to that same power. The reason that's so important is because when we write it this way, it looks again just like a power function, which we're used to dealing with. This something to the fourth power is the outside function, cosine of 5x plus 2 is the inside function. So we differentiate the outside by bringing the exponent down in front and subtracting one from the exponent, that's power rule for derivatives, and we leave the inside function completely untouched. But then we have to multiply by the derivative of that inside function. So we narrow in here to cosine of 5x plus 2 and realize we again have an outer and an inner function. Cosine is the outer, 5x plus 2 is the inner. So to differentiate, we take the derivative of the cosine function, the outer function, which is negative sine, leaving that inside function completely untouched. So we leave the 5x plus 2, but then we have to multiply by the derivative of that inside function. 5x plus 2, its derivative is 5, so we multiply by 5. And like with all chain rule problems, we know that we're done because we've reached the innermost layer of the function. There's no other function inside of 5x plus 2, so we know this is our last multiplication step, it's our last application of chain rule. And then we just need to simplify. So we bring this negative sign, the 4 and the 5, multiplied together to get this negative 20 out in front, and then we have the sine of 5x plus 2 and the cosine cubed, bringing this exponent back to the trig function to attach it there. They mean exactly the same thing, but written this way, we have one less set of parentheses, so it's a little cleaner. And this is our derivative function. Now, sometimes we'll be asked to find the value of the derivative at a particular point. When that's the case, we always want to find the derivative function first, and if necessary, simplify it. And only once we have our most simplified derivative function, do we then want to evaluate at a particular point? So let's say we were asked to find the derivative at x equals zero. Well, now that we have our simplified derivative function, we plug zero into that function. 5x plus two just becomes zero plus two or two. And so our result is negative 20 sine of two cosine cubed of two. That's the value of the derivative at zero. So if you ever have to evaluate at a point, don't try to find the value at the point first and then take steps with the derivative. Find the derivative function first and then at the end, plug in the point where you need to evaluate. Now we need to talk about mixed rules specifically because this is gonna come up a lot. We always need to think about whenever we're trying to take a derivative, what's our lead rule? That lead rule could be the product rule, it could be the quotient rule, or it could just be the product rule if we have the composition of functions. From there, we want to apply the lead rule using chain rule for the inner pieces, and then finally at the end, substitute if we were asked to, and simplify if needed. So what does this actually look like in practice? Let's say we have this function y equal to e to the x squared divided by 1 plus x cubed quantity squared. Well, if we look directly at the numerator here, if we're trying to find the derivative of y, if we look at the numerator, we realize we're dealing with an exponential function and we would need to apply chain rule because we have x squared as the exponent on that exponential. If we were Looking just at the denominator, we know we would need to apply power rule to bring this 2 down in front and apply chain rule for this inside function. So there's a lot going on here. But the lead rule is the rule that you start with. It's the overarching rule when you're differentiating. And in this case, it has to be quotient rule. Because if we zoom out and we don't look at individual pieces of this function and instead look at it as a whole, we can obviously see that it's a quotient. It's a fraction which means we have to start with quotient rule. Quotient rule is going to be our lead rule. So we're going to start there, and then we're going to use chain rule as we go to deal with these inner pieces. So using quotient rule, our derivative is going to start like this. And often when you have rules nested inside of rules, it can be easier to do this in multiple steps than to try to do it all at once. We know quotient rule tells us to take the derivative of the numerator. So that's what we've indicated here with the e to the x squared 
prime, this prime means the derivative of this function here. So instead of trying to find the derivative as part of this step, we've just said derivative of the numerator. Then we know that we multiply by the denominator and then subtract from that the numerator left untouched multiplied by the derivative of the denominator and then all of that divided by the denominator squared. That's quotient rule. So notice here, we used quotient rule to write the format or the bones of the derivative of this function, but we didn't take any derivatives of any of these inside functions. We didn't actually take the derivative of the numerator. We didn't actually take the derivative of the denominator. We just did one single step. That can be really helpful instead of doing it all at once so that we don't lose our place or get confused as we go. So now that we have the bones, we can start working on these inner derivatives. So that next step, is to look at the derivative of e to the x squared. Well, there we have to apply chain rule. e is the outside function, x squared is the inside function. So looking just at the outside, the derivative of e to the anything is still just e to that same anything. So e to the x squared, that's the derivative of the outside function. Then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So we have to multiply by the derivative of x squared. We didn't take the derivative of x squared, we just said x squared prime to indicate that we have to find another derivative. There was no differentiation to do here according to our quotient rule and none to do here with the e to the x squared. But we have to here find the derivative of one plus x cubed quantity squared. Again, the something squared is the outside function. One plus x cubed is the inside function. So to take the derivative of the outside function, we move this two down in front. That's the two we see here. And then subtract one from the exponent. Two minus one is one which is why we have a little implied exponent of one on this binomial. But then chain rule tells us we have to multiply by the derivative of that inside function. So we just say multiply by the derivative of one plus x cubed, but we don't actually deal with finding the derivative. We also take the opportunity in this step to just simplify the denominator by consolidating these exponents into this fourth power. And then our final step is gonna have us take the derivative of x squared as two x. So we end up with this two x in front multiplied by the e to the x squared, multiplied by this one plus x cubed quantity squared. And then here, this derivative, the derivative of one plus x cubed is zero plus three x squared, or just three x squared. So we take the three x squared, we multiply it by this two here to get six x squared. We leave this e to the x squared here, and we leave this binomial one plus x cubed to the first power, or simplified one plus x cubed. And now we have our derivative. So we identified the lead rule as quotient rule. We applied that lead rule and then we used chain rule for the inner pieces. We weren't asked to substitute for any specific value. We weren't asked to find the derivative at x equals zero or x equals one. So there's nothing to substitute. All that's left to do is simplify if we want to. And here what we notice is that we have a one plus x cubed quantity squared. We have a one plus x cubed to the implied first power and a one plus x cubed to the fourth power. So because we have one factor here, two factors here and four factors here, one, two, and four, we can cancel one factor from each of these, which is gonna remove this factor completely and leave us with one factor here and three factors in the denominator. Now from the numerator, between the two x e to the x squared and the six x squared e to the x squared, we have a common factor of two x e to the x squared that we can factor out. That's gonna leave us with just this one plus x cubed binomial and then minus a three x. And then if we reorder our terms descending as x cubed minus three x plus one, then we can rewrite our final derivative in its most simplified form. So just remember for any chain rule problem, no matter how complicated, just remember what is my primary rule? Identify that, then apply that lead rule using chain rule as you go for those inner pieces where it's needed. And anytime you run into that outside inside pattern, remember that chain rule tells you derivative of the outside, keep the inside, times the derivative of the inside. So if you want more help with chain rule and lots more practice, which is one of the best ways to master this, including multiple choice questions, free response questions, and worksheets, make sure to check out my Calculus One course linked below.